Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. I'm Andy RC and today I'm going to be taking a look at the happy model Sailfly X. Now I know this guy has been around for about a month now and the only reason I haven't checked it out yet is because I got ill so I'm a little bit behind with my reviews but I wanted to take a look at this one now as I've got the Full Speed Toothpick Pro and also the Gep RC Phantom which are kind of like the next level of this toothpick class although I'm not sure when you start out adding 4S you can put them under the same class anymore. To me, regardless of the genre's name, these models are supposed to be the brushless version of what I was trying to do when I first started the channel, and that was to have an ultralight model with the biggest prop available, because at the time the only motors available for this size were brushed motors, and they don't have that much thrust, so it was really important for the model to be light. Anyways, I think I have something to add to this one being late in the game. As from what you guys have been telling me in the comments, these all-in-one crazy boards have been failing at an alarming rate. And it's pretty much a lottery whether you get a good one. But not only that, when the Sailfly first came out, it had Betaflight version 3.5 flash to it. And this one has come with a release candidate of Betaflight 4, so it doesn't work with the latest Betaflight configurator. So so I thought rather than rolling back my configurator, I'll see if Happy Model have stepped up to the plate and provided a CLI dump for the official version of Betaflight 4, and they have. So I think we are on Betaflight version 4.04 .04 at the making of this video. It changes daily, but Happy Model have a CLI diff for this guy on 4.02, so I flashed the target to it so we can see if this one explodes. So where have these boards been failing? Well, I think it started when people were adding XT30s to the Mobula 7. If you remember, the original Mobula 7 had PH2 connectors, and those can cope with about 10 amps, with the trade-off being a huge voltage sag, and you'd be lucky if the LiPos lasted 10 cycles, especially if you were charging them to a high volt. So then, people, as well as Happy Model themselves, started putting XT30 connectors onto the boards, which does allow for better current flow, and that means that you get more performance and less voltage sag. You also don't end up with dead LiPos. But, just like with the PH2 connector, there is a trade-off. Now that we have this bigger connector, we plug it into the model and you get an initial spike which is outside the tolerance of the built-in 5 volt regulator, so it blows. And to combat that, they have added this 100 microfarad low ESR capacitor to smooth out the spike. The thing is, people are still reporting their boards blowing and that could be down to a few reasons. First of all, the capacitor wants to be soldered to the board itself rather Rather than at the XT30 connector, as they are less effective when there is a wire between them. The capacitor needs to be as close to the regulator as possible, otherwise it's not going to do its job properly. Second of all, the built-in ESCs are only rated to 5 amps each with a 6 amp burst for 6 seconds. So if we take the 5 amp and times that by 4, because that's four ESCs, then we have a 20 amp continuous rating or a 24 amp for the six second burst, which should be enough for a model like this. But I've seen 87 amps drawn through an XT30 connector in the past. And if you have a LiPo that can provide that kind of current, then the model can demand that current and you can blow the ESCs. That's why it's really important to make sure that you have got the correctly rated ESCs when you build your own. So really the capacitor is a patch and Happy Model should have upgraded the tolerances of the regulator as well as beefing up the ESCs. Maybe that's easier said than done when you don't have to implement it yourself, but that is the reality. I've also heard reports of people having no issues at all with this system, so it seems like there are some inconsistencies with the boards, therefore you either get lucky or not. So let's see what roll of the dice I get with this one.
The Sailfly X is the lightest out of these toothpick models, coming in at around about 37 grams without a battery. I was surprised to see though that it comes with a 300 milliamp 3S LiPo, because when I tested the full speed toothpick, which is only 6 grams heavier than the Sailfly, 3S caused a lot of vibrations due to the props being over revved. These 65mm props are over two years old and even though they have been resurrected to fit a 1.5mm shaft, they are very bendy so at a certain RPM they start to flex and they are no longer producing useful thrust. Instead, in the case of the full speed toothpick, they produced vibrations on 3S which caused unwanted flight characteristics and a lot of jello in the camera at the same time. So I recommended a 300 milliamp 2S on that model and it had plenty of power and flew really nice. The motors are Happy Models own 1102 8500 kV with a naked bottom and that's an even higher kV than the full speed toothpick. The thing is though, the full speed motors are an 1103 stator and if I've learned anything from the speed tests that I've done over the years the taller the stator is, the faster the model usually is. The motors do have a nice silicon wire and you can't really see it but they plug into the all-in-one board via JST connectors. The frame is very minimalistic and it's a true X. It flexes a little bit but with this being so light I'd be surprised to see it get broken in a crash. Underneath we have a flexible 3D printed battery holder which fits the supplied LiPo really tight on its side. The model weighs 62.8 grams with this included LiPo. Then I gotta talk about the canopy. It's 3D printed and I reckon I could do a better job with one of those 3D printing pens than this one. But I just think it's a bad print because it comes with a spare purple canopy and also the LiPo holder and the quality of these are much better than this red one. The camera is an all-in-one and again it is difficult to see but it actually connects to the flight controller with a JST connector so everything is going to be really easy to replace if something gets broken. It's a 120 degree field of view CMOS camera with a 4x3 aspect ratio and an attached 25 milliwatt 40 channel VTX which has TBS smart audio hooked up to it and that is hooked up to a UART it's also got a spare UART as well if you want to use that for something it does have a button that you can access but I just use smart audio to change the channel through the on-screen display it has a little linear antenna and because of the canopy the camera angle is fixed so you can't change it. The Crazy Bee boards have a built-in SPI receiver. This is the FR Sky version so you can either bind it by powering up the model and then pressing the bind button for a couple of seconds or typing in the CLI command. And we also have access to the boot button and the USB port. I'd recommend using the D8 mode rather than D16 because D16 has telemetry but there are still reports of dropout problems when you are using D16 mode. The model did come set up with the receiver set to FR Sky X, so if you want to bind in D8 mode then you'll need to change that to FR Sky D. The Betaflight setup is really good actually, I just noted down a couple of things. Motor stop was turned on and air mode was turned off, so you want to change that for acro, otherwise the motors will stop if you do a maneuver at the bottom of the throttle. There's no buzzer on this board and d shot commands wasn't set up. It also wasn't set up in the modes tab for a lost model alarm so with a model this small you really want to have that set up. And the CLI diff which I downloaded from the Happy Model website had a couple of the resources remapped and when I applied the diff to Betaflight version 4.02 I got a couple of errors but everything seems to be working fine so hopefully the ones that failed are not relevant. In the box you get two full sets of spare props, so that's three sets in total, which I really like, along with a LiPo strap, some spare screws, a small screwdriver and a prop remover. 
there is a manual which goes over the basics and considering the setup is pretty good it might get you there but any model that comes with beta flight is going to need some knowledge of how to use beta flight to get you in the air okay so first of all let's see how this guy flies line of sight I haven't charged the 300 milliamp 3s lipo to a high volt because I don't recommend it but it sprung straight into the air I'm using their PIDs and looks like it's going to have a lot of power but what I'm listening out for are vibrations from the propellers so let's see if I get that so just bring it closer so we can hear it because it's actually quite a quiet model so let's go for a punch hmm hear a little bit of vibration but not too bad I'll have to see how that manifests when flying FPV. But there's definitely something there. It feels like it's flying smooth though. Anyways, gosh, this thing is tiny. Let's see if I can go into acro mode and see how it performs. I'm not hearing any oscillations or anything like that. Really difficult to keep your eye on it though because it been so tiny but that's the good thing about it it's inconspicuous I was getting RF signal lost there then and I'm in D8 mode not D16 yeah the antennas on these things aren't very long and they do get blocked by the LiPo so don't expect long range with these guys mm, I don't know though I'm on the fence I'm hearing a little bit of vibration on the punch you see as the lipo is sort of depleting then it's not as bad because we are losing a bit of power but I think there's going to be no doubt that this thing is going to be pretty fast when flying at FPV. Yeah, I'm not hearing any oscillations tuning wise, although that would be quite difficult to hear on a small model like this. It is so quiet. And that is something that is great about this class is just how quiet and inconspicuous it is. But I've heard it's pretty sluggish on a 2S. So let's get and fly it FPV on this 3S LiPo and see how it performs. So here is some DVR footage with the 3S LiPo and straight away I can see that the voltage scaling is out at 12.31. A fully charged 3S LiPo should be 12.6 volts. And straight away, I could tell that there was a problem. Unfortunately, you are probably not going to see it through the DVR, but I was getting extreme oscillations, specifically in the turns, but also in a straight line as well. So the tune that they have given this guy on 4.02 is just not working for this model. We don't have any Jello, and the picture is pretty nice. The camera is nice, but that's irrelevant because watch... I give a full punch out and the thing just tumbles out of the sky. Now I assumed that just like all of the other reports that the board has failed and it has blown but when I eventually got to the model that wasn't the case. There were three props missing and they weren't in the vicinity of the model. I never found them so in that full throttle punch out three of the propellers flew off because of the high RPMs. Now I'll tell you, these props are tension fitted, but you cannot remove them with your hands. That's why they have installed a prop remover and that further validates that these props are being pushed past what they were originally designed for. So you can say, yeah, they're coming out with stiffer props. Well, are they gonna 
add glue to them because if they come out with stiffer props that's only going to give more thrust and then they are just going to fly off even easier. However, I was glad that the flight controller hadn't blown. So, in the name of science, let's see what a 300 milliamp 2S is like in terms of punch. So, again, I'm going to try and get it close and let's go full throttle. Now, there's not as much punch there, but that vibration noise has definitely gone away. And that is the noise I would expect from a model. Uh, I really do think, you know, the 3S is pushing these props past what they are designed for. And, you know, I wouldn't say that it was sluggish on 2S. There's plenty of power there and it's not vibrating or anything like that. It's acting nicely, very similar to how I found the toothpick from full speed. Yeah, you could definitely see that there was a bit more power there, but the trade-off was that it didn't fly very nice. And you also got a bunch of Jallo as well. Although I have to say, with that one, you got Jallo on 2S because the camera wasn't mounted very nicely. Anyways, to see how they behave through the goggles. So this is some DVR footage I've skipped uh, around about a minute in because I actually got a pretty decent flight time out of this 300 milliamp 2S GMB LiPo. And there was less power, but, you know, none of the props flew off. I think as well with this one, it's got such an extreme camera angle that when you give it throttle, it moves forward more than it gains in height when you're looking through the goggles. But can I recommend this model? I don't think I can, you know, look at me trying to do a inverted your spin. That's how extreme the camera angle is, so it might be maybe 45 to 50 degrees, so I have a couple of goes at trying to get an inverted your spin, but you can see just not quite managing it there. I think the positive I'll take away from this model is that the camera is actually really decent. But yeah, when I put the 2S LiPo on there, it was a particularly windy day, so I think a combination of the model being a lot lighter now and it getting pushed around a lot by the wind, it was definitely causing some buffeting, so either the tune has gone in the opposite direction, I certainly couldn't hear any oscillations from this point, but maybe it had gone in the opposite direction, either way, the tune not working for a 3S LiPo or a 2S LiPo. So yeah, it's a difficult one for me to recommend and you know, there are a lot of models out there and as I mentioned earlier, there are others coming so you know, I'll have to leave it to you to decide. I mean, you know, it's a pretty decent price. Doing a bit of a range test here, check out the RSSI, it goes into the 30s, so you're talking about 100 meters with this one of range. And you can see though, you know, we are three minutes in there and yeah, I think it was four minutes and I actually brought it in and it, then it just started to flash with the voltage warning. So decent flight time, very similar experience to what I got with the full speed toothpick on 2S. So yeah, not as much power, but you know, the props aren't vibrating like crazy and in the case of this model flying off. I mean, I really did try and remove a prop with my hand and I couldn't do it. In fact, what was happening is the frame started to bend and the motors started to feel like the screws would strip when I tried to pull the props off. So that's how much force was given to rip three props off on 3S, but I don't know, maybe not everybody 
is flying these things at full throttle like I was. Anyways, I'm trying to come in for a landing there because we're at four minutes. And if you are interested in this model, I'll link it in the below. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Please continue to subscribe. Cheers.